It's a shame to think that these animals won't be able to be seen here in our state. This is ridiculous. Hey, what's going on everyone? Ken in here and today we're gonna walk around but I really wanna talk to you about some things that are happening here in Florida that are going to wind up affecting all reptile keepers all over the United States. As you guys know, there have been a lot of new laws being passed regarding reptiles and a lot of concern about reptiles and reptile breeding uh, in the state of Florida and in the United States in general. And it really feels like we're being singled out, like we're being kind of demonized for loving these animals. We sincerely thank all of you happy campers out there. Your support makes a real difference in our efforts here at Camp Kennet. This week's special shout out goes to Jennifer and Koopa Cook. Thank you for all you do and for loving reptiles. It's really disconcerting. It, it really stinks. I mean, I moved down to Florida in 2004 so I could build this sanctuary and work with these animals and really do good work educating everyone. That's what these videos are all about. That's what this channel's all about. I want to show people how to do things the right way. There have been, of course, so many things in the news in the last 20 years. Obviously, the pythons in the Everglades. We've got brown bass lisks. We've got Nile monitors down here. Um, we've got iguanas. Um, and, you know, whenever those things happen, whenever there's a feral population of animals, it's a problem. Um, by the way, I'm just going to stop and show you guys that I did move the leprechauns into the sulcata environment. It's just easier for me to care for all the animals in one area. Uh, I wanted to update you on that as well. But even though we have these invasive species, um, and they went from taking uh, iguanas and pythons from the conditional species list, to list now to the prohibited list, um, you know, as we said, Last year, when that happened, we knew that there was going to be more rights taken away from reptile keepers. More regular people, like myself, uh, like just reptile breeders and people who love their animals, um, are going to be limited uh, in the future. And it looks like that's starting to happen now. The wheels are in motion. There is an idea being floated that there is going to be a white list or a safe list of reptiles that you're able to keep in Florida. Um, for a guy like me, that, that makes me nervous because obviously, you know, I do the best I can with the animals I keep. Mostly I keep tortoises, but I also have the monitor lizards, Slinky. Um, he is a Asian water monitor, I'm sure that when this band list comes out, animals like Slinky, snakes like boas, um, possibly even ball pythons, I've heard sulcata tortoises may even be added to a prohibited list because they say in order to make it on that list, anything that can breed in Florida will be on a blacklist. Um, this is ridiculous. This is an overreach. This is based on faulty science um, by kind of activists that are really trying to limit what we can keep in captivity. A lot of the things I do here when I build these habitats um, is about helping certain species. Um, you know, I work with the Turtle Survival Alliance. We work with different zoos um, and provide a permanent home for some of their surplus animals like the radiated tortoises you guys see here doing their thing. Now, radiated tortoises can breed here in Florida. They're an endangered species, but they're well protected here. In Madagascar, these animals are exploited because of their beauty, uh, mostly winding up into the pet trade through the black market. Because of the fact that we can breed them here and keep them safe, this species is stable here in the United States and is really represented nicely in captive collections. If certain laws go into place here, we're going to drastically limit our ability to care for these endangered animals and provide them a stable country to thrive in. You know, and I always said like the United States isn't only just a beacon of hope for people across the globe or what it's supposed to be a beacon of hope, a, fr a place where you can have freedoms if you're responsible and you care for, you know, you, you adhere to the law and you're a good citizen. It's also a place where we can protect animals from around the world here because our borders are stable. 
and uh, that's an important aspect of conservation. Yes, it would be amazing to conserve these animals in the area that they are from, but unfortunately a lot of political problems happen there. There's a lot of, um, you know, corruption and just strife in many of these countries where these animals are from. And it's up to us here in the United States to be responsible and try and help the animals out here. We breed them to provide uh, legal and healthy pets. Uh, so we're no longer taking from the black market, which is very important. And a lot of that happens here in Florida. Um, so there is absolutely a conservation bend to breeding animals in captivity. A lot of um, animal rights people may not think that's the case. They think that no animal in captivity is good. Um, but the reality is, is that there is absolutely a, a need for captive bred animals. It is very, very important. And we've got to make sure that we're continually able to do that here in Florida. Now, I understand a lot of people are concerned about um, invasive species and about animals getting into the environment and wreaking havoc. Um, hey, that's a concern of mine as well. And, you know, we put things into place. I've worked with fish and wildlife. I've built the proper environments. Now we know that invasive species are a problem. Um, obviously, you know, I mentioned some of them before. None of us responsible reptile keepers want to see that happen. But many times, these things are overblown. Um, you know, they're, it's, it's so strange. Iguanas, we know, have been in the United States for at least 40, 50 years. And there have been reports of them even earlier than that. Just where South Florida is, on the northern edge of the Caribbean, um, there are hurricanes. They can move those animals around. Did they get helped out from the pet trade? Absolutely. But these animals have already been here. Um, of course, the Galapagos tortoises that I work with, the Aldabras, these are animals that can breed in Florida, but they're not animals that are gonna take, take up residence in Florida because in order to incubate the eggs, there has to be some human involvement. And many of the animals that can breed in Florida need human involvement to actually thrive and to come to complete term in their incubation. Um, you know, the other thing, when they say they want to create this list, it's about being proactive. Um, I already told you that, you know, there's some dodgy science. Uh, you know, they, they're, they're saying that, uh, you know, certain snakes can thrive in cold weather uh, because in their range there's cold areas, but they don't account for the fact that there's mountainous elevation where the snakes are not found. They're just using a blanket map saying, oh no, they can survive uh, in colder areas, but those snakes don't live at that, at that altitude. So you're not gonna see, you're not gonna see groups of Burmese pythons or iguanas or anything like that living in Georgia or living in South Carolina. It just gets too cold. Extreme South Florida is where those animals have taken up residence. We already know that a hurricane is most likely the biggest contributor to the population of snakes that are in the Everglades. They, in fact, most can be tra traced back genetically to uh, a couple of snake farms uh, that were destroyed in Hurricane Andrew. That's when the biggest amount of trouble with these animals or the biggest inoculation of the Everglades and Burmese pythons came about after Hurricane Andrew. Um, are there responsible owners? Yes. But similar to the gun situation is there, there's always going to be criminals. If you make these animals outlawed, if you don't continue to work with with us reptile breeders, you're just going to create a black market. You're just going to make things worse because now you guys aren't going to be able, meaning fish and wildlife, aren't going to be able to keep track of who has these animals and who doesn't. They're already short staffed and that's the problem. They want to make these laws because they can't enforce them, they're saying, because they can't, they don't have enough uh, law enforcement to actually go around and check up on all these things. Well, imagine that they're just admitting that they don't have the manpower, so you're just gonna get people that are gonna do this illegally anyway. And you're only hurting the people that worked with you. Um, I pay for my permits every year. I, I have to be um, completely um, transparent. I let uh, Fish and Wildlife know what I have. 
Um, I work closely with my inspectors. I've been a holding facility. Um, you know, as we visit with the elongated tortoises here, these are another example of a non-native species that I've helped out. These were animals that were in the food trade. These animals were uh, taken from Chinatown in New York City many, many years ago in the, in the 90s. And uh, they now have a permanent home here and they reproduce here safely. So here's generation after generation of an animal that was going to be eaten. Now it's found a safe home here in Florida, in the United States, an animal that's found in Southeast Asia. And it is being cared for by me uh, and has been reproduced successfully rather than losing that that tremendous um, bounty of genetics and uh, of, of actual turtles. These animals are well over 30 years old here and thriving and doing very well. Um, it's just a tragic thing to think that all the hard work so many of us appreciate here on this channel and with other breeders, other other reptile keepers across the United States um, and across this state are going to be affected by. It's it's completely troubling and it, it's something that I um, I'm just heartbroken about if they implement this new whitelist blacklist uh, scenario. Um, Stick around to the end of the video because I am going to uh, give you guys some information as to what you can do uh, to help out, to help everyone in Florida because as goes Florida, you can rest assured the rest of the country will follow. Many of the animals you love and purchase come from Florida. Uh, many of the breeders are down here. So please keep that in mind. It is incredibly important for us to be able to continue what we do. Um, I'm primarily focused on education, but I do believe that you should be able to have a pet turtle. You should be able to have a pet lizard and you should be able to graduate. If you can provide the proper husbandry for a larger lizard or a larger snake, I feel as a citizen of the United States that if you've displayed the responsibility, if you have to get permits and you've met all the requirements, you should be allowed to do that. I don't think that is a bad thing. I think it is a good thing. Um, just again, update while we're walking around. I'm talking about this very serious topic. Here is Cayman Creek. I was able to get some uh, grasses planted today. I'm working on the chain link back there. Uh, we've got um, the fence going up next week. So Cayman Creek, which is going to become home to some Central American crocodilians, um, is taking shape. I know it's been a long time coming, but it's just hard to get the uh, work done over here because uh, construction guys are in high demand right now. And then there's a shortage of supplies. So it's been taking a little while, but here we are uh, coming together. And I think we're going to get this whole thing done uh, within the next week and a half. So we'll have came in here soon. I got to plant it. Very exciting stuff. But again, it's something that if there is a blacklist, then guess what? I won't be able to keep those animals, you know, or who knows what's going to happen. I'm sure I'll be grandfathered in. I'm sure my animals won't be taken from me, but guess what? I won't be able to replace them. I won't be able to replace an animal like Slinky over here. I won't be able to have another uh, water monitor and I'm denied the ability to care for an animal as magnificent as Slinky. And obviously if you look, I've done so much work on this enclosure and there are others out there who have done incredible work for these animals and it's a shame to think that these animals won't be able to be seen here in our state. It's horrible. Um, I know that they're easy does it boy. I know that they're looking at large lizards like this and they think oh god these things are going to become established. But the reality is these animals have been in the pet trade for many, many years. And they've been in the pet trade here in Florida. Has there been the odd monitor found uh, in Florida, water monitor? Yes, it's been an escaped pet. But there are escaped dogs, there are escaped cats that do way more, way more damage. And uh, they ignore those because they're fluffy and cute. And you know why they ignore them? Because they know they could never take away people's rights to own a dog or a cat. They could never do it because they would get holy hell from the public. 
and we need to raise holy hell and let people know that our animals are just as important as the fluffy ones. I love dogs too. I love cats as well. But these animals are no less deserving of a chance to be kept and kept responsibly in captivity. Slinky, as you know, was an animal that got too big for his previous owners and he found his way to me where he now lives his life in this grand, beautiful enclosure. And it is so important that we can continue to do this so we can educate people. Do I think these lizards are for everyone? No, but I would hate to see the ability to keep them gone because we learn so much about these animals. Scientists learn from us. Zoos learn from private keepers. We all learn from each other and we're all trying to do good things with these animals. And if these animals are just, you know, kept away from us, they won't be studied. They won't be studied in their native range because no one cares about them. They view them as pests and it's a shame. What could we learn? What more, what things are we not going to be found out, uh, find out about these animals if we don't understand and live with them as best we can? You know, we've been living with dogs for about 40,000 years and uh, we've only scratched the surface of living with reptiles and seeing what they're capable of when kept in captivity. Who knows what could happen? Um, it's just an incredibly sad state of affairs. He's a little hungry today. He thinks that I'm bringing him food, but there's no food for you today, Slinks. It's just a visit and we're just talking. You know, I, I kind of say, you know, when they worry about invasive species, um, I really feel that the species that have taken residence are the only species we're going to see take residence in Florida. We've had the opportunities for other types of invasive species to take root. Banning these animals is not the way to do it. Um, they have not established themselves uh, in the last 40 years. Why would it happen uh, now? We've seen that there are Nile monitors. Yes, they're prohibited, but why make all monitors prohibited when all monitors aren't the problem? It's just a blanket way of getting rid of the reptile hobby. That's what they want to do. They want to get rid of us. And I think that's a shame. I know a lot of a lot of you out there who watch this channel maybe don't have large lizards like this, but don't you think it's a shame that people that do the right thing uh, are punished as well? Um, it's just super frustrating, man. The whole thing is just, it's frustrating. And um, it makes you get angry um, at institutions that are supposed to help us and they're actually hurting us. Um, they're overreaching. They're denying applications for licenses um, just because of a tiny little error in writing. And once you're denied, if you don't have everything dialed, they will completely throw away your, your um, they'll revoke your license and you won't be able to renew it. Um, those are some of the practices that are happening um, at Fish and Wildlife. And that's a shame to hear those stories of reputable keepers and breeders who are being revoked their licenses because of clerical errors or a misspelling or you miss one thing. It's just really a shame. Um, I don't know what I do without the ability to care for these animals and to see them grow and to provide really cool habitats and happy places for them to live. I really just don't know, man. This, this whole video is like a stream of consciousness. It's been on my mind. I was talking to my friend, Michael Cole, um, and he's been one of the guys that's been working with USA Arc Florida and USA Arc to combat this, um, these unfair proposed laws. Uh, they are really working hard. They are really trying to fight for us. I know it seems like it's a futile effort, but we have to fight. And unfortunately, where we live in the United States takes money to fight because you got to hire lawyers and you got to you got to really be diligent and the legal process costs money. So I'm going to have links in the description for USA, uh, US Arc, Florida and US Arc. US Arc is kind of the over encompassing organization that is fighting for the rights of all of us all across the United States and US Arc Florida is focusing on these unjust laws being proposed here in our state in Florida. Um, let's go see what's going on with the gators. 
what are these guys doing? I saw that um, big old snaggy tooth was out and about, but I don't know where he is now. He's probably in the water. Anyhow, we'll peek in there. Um, but yeah, guys, you know, it's just really up to us to kind of get together and do the right thing, which is attend these meetings. There's a meeting coming up May 3rd and May 4th. I'll have links in the description. Um, it's an FWC uh, meeting about these proposed rule changes. And if you guys could write in, there'll be, I'll, I'm going to provide the links that you guys can write in, that you guys can let your voices be heard. Um, if you live in Florida or not, doesn't matter because this is going to affect all of us. And uh, here comes Dale, I believe. There she is. She's looking pretty fat. Uh, fat and happy Dale girl. Now, where is Snaggy Poo? Let's go find him. Um, you know, it's like this. Um, we're going to provide those links in the description. You can attend these meetings in uh, person. You'll have to register to speak. Uh, if you want to have a dialogue, if you want your voice to be heard, there'll be ability to speak. And there'll also be some um, time constraints for that. But if we can get everyone together um, to let our voices be heard, I think that is our clearest path to victory, uh, to fighting these proposed rule changes. Let's see what he's doing. Ow, 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 ow. Ow, ow. Where's Snaggletooth? I know he's in there. Ow, 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 ow. Snaggy. Come on out. Come on. Ow, 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 ow. Here comes Dale, and Snaggletooth is down in that mud. Wait a minute, that's Snaggletooth. Yeah, yeah, da what the heck? No, wait, that's Dale. Is she getting bigger? Am I losing my mind? That looks like Dale. She is so fat, guys. My God, I got to slow down on feeding her. What the heck? Wow, that's a big girl. Large and in charge. Now, where's Snags? Ew, 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 ew. Oh, there he is, you sneaky guy. Sneaky. I'll start calling you Sneaky Snaggletooth. He was just kind of hanging out right at the bottom there. My gosh. Good boy. All right. Well, you're definitely an ambush predator, aren't you? Are you going to explode out of the water there, Snaggy Poo? I know she's always willing to come out of the water for some food. Oh, she's crawling on top of the Snaggy. Anyway, guys, I guess I just want to finish this video off. It's a passionate subject. Um, I just really wanted you guys to be aware of what's going on. And to surmise, they're trying to make a white list and a black list of what we can keep here in Florida. It will affect everyone in the United States. Trust me. It will, if not just because you, you won't be able to get certain animals, um, it'll also affect you because once your state legislation starts to see what Florida is doing, believe me, the rest of the states are sure to follow. And it's only a matter of time before reptile keeping is a history. Ooh, almost fell down right onto the mud <laughs> and became lunch. But um, anyway, um, it's important that we, you know, try and get our act together. I'm going to have the links in the description for the meetings coming up here for Florida Fish and Wildlife. And um, I know that I know that our girl here, ooh, big girl, come on, big girl. I know that our girl Dale certainly wants you guys to uh, help out. Not that she's in any danger because she is, of course, a native animal here, as is the snags. But uh, Dale, you ate yesterday. Get back, get back, get back. Good grief. Anyway, um, I, I really hope you guys will take this seriously. I know it's been uh, 24 minutes of me rambling on, but I just had to voice my concerns because it seems like every year a little bit less or a little bit more of our freedoms and our, our privileges get eroded. And um, I don't want to live in a world where we're not able to do the things we love. That's what's amazing about this country. The fact that we can make a business or have a life talking about these animals and make, make a living doing it, or just the fact that we're able to keep them as a hobby in this country is incredible. Um, 
it's a miraculous thing to be perfectly honest and um, I don't want younger generations to lose what's given me purpose in my life you know I love these animals I love to take care of them I love to educate folks on them and um, I just know there's more people growing up right now that are going to do even greater things than I've done and than so many of us have done. Are you gonna come back out? I don't have the bucket. There's no bucket here today. No bucket. Just chill out. So, links are in the description, okay? You're gonna have um, everything you need to do. US Arc, US Arc Florida. Um, I'm gonna have the dates uh, listed for those meetings. All right, everyone, that's it. Let me know what you think in the comments below about what's going on here in Florida. Spread the word. Share this video if you'd like. Um, it's super important that we get this done and we don't lose the freedoms that we've worked so hard for. I am all about being responsible. You know how I do things here at the camp. Uh, I'm not talking about having large animals in an apartment and then getting sick of them and letting them go. I'm talking about people working together to create great habitats for these animals and provide the proper education and responsibility and working with Florida Fish and Wildlife or other states, wildlife agencies, uh, so we can, hey, if it's gotta be regulated, it's gotta be regulated, I'm all for that. But taking away people's ability to do this will in no doubt, for the long term, hurt these animals and um, we don't wanna see that happen. Thanks so much for listening, guys. I'm sorry it was such a uh, long diatribe, but it's super important that we got this out. I'll talk to you all again real soon and uh, can't wait to finish up all the fun projects that we have here at the camp. Be well, everyone. Take care.